Hello and welcome to Byju's IAS presenting to you the daily quiz for 1st of October 2021. But before we begin here is an announcement. Byju's IAS is conducting a national scholarship test and this will be conducted on the 3rd of October at 11 a.m. To register for this test follow the link that has been provided in the description box below and fill in your details. You can take the test on the 3rd of October which is the coming Sunday and stand a chance to win some attractive scholarships. Please note that the registrations will close on the 2nd of October at 11 a.m. So do register before that. Now let us begin and have a look at the first question for today. The recently launched Digi Saksham is Option A, a digital skills program to enhance the employability of youth by imparting digital skills. Option B, a scheme aimed at providing encouragement and support to specially able children to pursue technical education. Option C, a scheme aimed at making people in rural areas across the states and union territories digitally literate. Option D, a digital wallet that enables storage and access to educational documents health records and certificates electronically what is the context according to this article in the pib today the minister for labor and employment has launched the digi saksham initiative so what exactly is this digi saksham it is a joint initiative of the labor ministry and microsoft india and this initiative has been launched to impart digital skills to youth so that they become employable in this era that is largely driven by technology now coming back to the question please do not get confused between digi saksham and the saksham scheme the saksham scheme aims at encouraging specially able children to take up technical education that is they are given scholarship under the scheme so b becomes incorrect Option C is talking about the PMG Disha that aims to raise the digital literacy standards of villagers so this also becomes incorrect and the option D here is talking about the government's digi locker initiative so D also is incorrect therefore the right answer to our question would be option A moving on to question number 2 consider the following statements with respect to account aggregator framework number 1 It is a consent-based financial data sharing that would allow individuals and small businesses to access, control and share personal data with third-party institutions. Account aggregators were created through an inter-regulatory decision by the Reserve Bank of India, the Securities Exchange Board of India, the Insurance Regulatory Development Authority, Pensions Fund Regulatory and Development Authority and Financial Stability Development Council. Number 3 RBI licenses and governs rules for account aggregators which of the given statements is or are correct what is the context in this article in the pib today there is a mention of the account aggregator framework and hence we've taken this question the account aggregator framework is an exciting addition to india's digital infrastructure You might ask me why this is because it will allow banks to access consented data flows and verified data so what exactly is an account aggregator this account aggregator is a non banking financial company and this is engaged in the business of providing the service of retrieving or collecting financial information that is related to its customers under a contract So these account aggregators can also consolidate they can also organize and present all such information to the customer or any other financial information user as specified by the bank so how does this work these account aggregators will enable the flow of data between financial information providers and the financial information users that is here the banks serve as a financial data producer and the lenders serve as the data seekers so now the customers are free to sign up with an account aggregator and these customers can share their data from one of their accounts for a specific purpose to a new lender or a financial institution and this they can do by giving consent via one of these account aggregators so how will this help The account aggregator will replace the lengthy terms and conditions of blank check acceptance with specific or step by step permission and also have control over the use of customer data right now let us go back to the question and answer it number 1 it is a consent based financial data sharing that would allow individuals as well as small businesses to access control and share personal data with third party institutions this is correct 
The account aggregator framework was created through an inter-regulatory decision by RBI and other regulators and these other regulators include SEBI, IRDAI, PFRDA and also FSDC. Therefore, number 2 also becomes correct. And the licenses to these account aggregators is issued by the Reserve Bank of India and also Reserve Bank of India will govern the rules for them. Making statement number 3 also correct. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option C, 1, 2 and 3. Now, let us take up question number 3. It is the largest nuclear power station in India and is operated by Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited. It is the result of an intergovernmental agreement between India and Russia. Nuclear power generation facility being talked about is Option A, Kalpakam Nuclear Power Plant Option B, Kudankulam Nuclear Power Plant Option C, Kaiga Nuclear Power Plant Option D, Kakrapar Atomic Power Station the right answer to this question is option B, Kudankulam Nuclear Power Plant. The Kudankulam Nuclear Power Plant is located in coastal Tamil Nadu. And it is a civil nuclear power plant that is built by India in a joint collaboration with Russia. So it was a result of the intergovernmental agreement between India and Russia. Yes, it is the largest nuclear power station in India and is also operated by Nuclear Power Corporation of India. So the right answer would be option B. We have taken this question as there is a reference to Kudankulam nuclear power plant in today's The Hindu newspaper. Moving on to question number 4. Which of the following is or are not among the eligibility criteria to become a Supreme Court judge as envisaged in Article 124 of the Indian Constitution? Statement number 1. Only an Indian citizen not exceeding 65 years of age is eligible. Number 2. The person should serve as a judge of one high court or more continuously for at least 10 years or the person should be an advocate in the high court for at least 10 years or a distinguished jurist. What is the context? This article in the Hindu newspaper today says that this month of October is going to be a marathon month for the Supreme Court Collegium. Why? Because judicial vacancies are being filled up. The Collegium in the month of August got 9 new judges appointed to the Supreme Court. It has also recommended 68 names for elevation as judges of different high courts. And now the Supreme Court Collegium has suggested the names of 16 judicial officers as well as advocates to the government for appointment as judges in 4 different high courts in India. And it is in this context that we've taken up this question. See, Article 124 of the Indian Constitution lays down the eligibility criteria to become a Supreme Court judge. What are they? Number 1. For an individual to become the judge of the Supreme Court, he must be an Indian citizen. Only Indian citizen can become Supreme Court judge. Number 2. In terms of age, he or she should not be over 65 years of age. Therefore, statement number 1 becomes correct. The other eligibility criteria is that the person should serve as a judge of one of the high courts or more continuously for at least 5 years or the person should be an advocate in the high court for at least 10 years or he or she should be a distinguished jurist. So statement number 2 becomes incorrect. So the right answer to our question would be option B as it is not one of the eligibility criteria mentioned in article 124 of the constitution. We all know that the appointment of judges to Supreme Court are made by President of India, but the names are recommended by the Collegium. A task for you for today is to let me know is the Collegium's recommendation final and binding. Type your answers in the comment section below. Now let us take up a previous year question from Prelims Paper 2020. With reference to the history of India, consider the following pairs. Number 1. Aurang, in charge of Treasury of the State. Number 2. Bunyan, Indian agent of the East India Company. Number 3. Mirasi Dar, designated revenue payer to the state. Which of the pairs given above is or are correctly matched? The term Aurang is a Persian term for warehouse. So number 1 becomes incorrect. It is not a person in charge of the treasury of the state. Coming to Bunyan, Bunyan was an agent of the East India Company. It was a term used for Bunya or traders. So number 2 is correct. Mirasi Dars were the owners of the land and they were also designated revenue payers to the state. Therefore, number 3 becomes correct. So the right answer to our question would be option B, 2 and 3 only. The fact of the day for today is Amrut 2.0. 
what is the context two missions have been announced in order to effectively address the challenges of rapidly urbanizing india and also to contribute towards the achievement of sustainable development goals 2030 one being the swachh bharat mission 2.0 and the other being atal mission for rejuvenation and urban transformation that is amrut 2.0 these announcements aim at making all the cities in india garbage free through swachh bharat mission and also water secure through amrut 2.0 See the earlier launch Swachh Bharat mission focused on construction of toilets it focused on making cities open defecation free now the Swachh Bharat mission urban 2.0 would aim to make these facilities better that is to reclaim all the landfills and also take the processing of municipal solid waste to 100% which is currently at 70% now let us talk about Amrut 2.0 Amrut was launched in the year 2015. The priority for Amrut scheme is to provide basic services like water supply, sewerage and urban transport to households. That is to build all those amenities in the cities which will improve the quality of life for all and especially the poor and the disadvantaged in the society. These are the thrust areas of Amrut mission. That is to make sure that each and every household in urban india have proper supply of water and a sewage connection number 2 would be to develop green as well as well maintained open spaces as well as parks to increase the amenity value of these cities this will also improve the quality of life available to the citizens it also aims at reducing the pollution in the urban areas by switching to public transportation or also through the construction of non motorized transport facilities such as cycling it also wants to check flooding in urban areas through ensuring storm water drainage and also among its thrust areas is sewerage management as well as septage management and this it aims to do by providing a sewage connection in each and every household 